Good day. My name is Victor Locke, and I'm very pleased to be talking today about cybersecurity and how that affects the sustainability challenge that we have toward a net zero uh, 2025 for Schneider Electric and for many countries, uh, 2030, 2031. Uh, very prescient uh, with COP26 uh, coming just around the corner and for everyone else who uh, you know lives in the world. So really the key point today is to show how cybersecurity is an important part in supporting the networks and the infrastructures necessary to achieve the challenges that are facing us. So a quick overview of the agenda. Uh, I'll give a quick introdu introduction to myself as the speaker. Uh, we'll talk about connectivity and how that drives sustainability. Uh, I'll start at a ground zero for cybersecurity and what is it, a, a brief description. Then we'll think about why everyone is a target. There is no industry out there or sector which is not affected by cybersecurity today and why that is. We'll also look at the steps towards exploitation and how we can perhaps affect and change and perhaps mitigate the steps that the hostile actors uh, face. Then we'll think of the frameworks for change. You know, what do we need to put in place to make it more difficult for the hostiles to you know, give us a give us a difficult life? Then we'll discuss how we meet the challenge at Schneider Electric and how many of our customers have uh, worked with us to to meet those challenges. And we'll then wrap up about cybersecurity and how that sustains the sustainability challenges that are facing us today. So well, welcome to the next 20 minutes. So I'm your speaker today. My name is Victor Loch. I have 30 years as part of the OT family, many of which have been within Schneider Electric. I had three years within information assurance uh, at government level uh, and also with many critical national infrastructure industries. Overall, I've had 15 years in cybersecurity, starting uh, way back in 2006, uh, when many people didn't fully understand that cybersecurity was going to be the issue that it is today. Uh, one of the key things that we have is discussing and actually part of the E3CC subgroup. Uh, so this is a, a chairmanship which uh, which I hold uh, on behalf of Schneider Electric. This is a, a three-way uh, dialogue between uh, Schneider Electric, operators of essential services, uh, UK government, both at government level and uh, agencies, uh, to ensure that we can come up with tangible benefits that really improve the operational performance and security of operators of critical national infrastructure. It's really all about providing tangible benefits for operators. Uh, Schneider Electric simply act as a technology source and a hub to share our knowledge to the best effect to the industry in general. So why does sustainability drive connectivity? Well, if we think of the net zero challenges, uh, such as the 2010-31 directive, which is an EU directive, where buildings have to be near net zero uh, by 31. How we're going to achieve that is really getting a closed loop control almost between uh, the heating required, uh, for example, in a building, uh, how the HVAC is controlled, and how we're monitoring and managing that in almost real time. Uh, some of our early adopters, uh, such as the Deloitte uh, building in uh, in Holland, are actually a, a net exporter to the grid, so we can show that it is achievable. Uh, but how can we achieve that sustainably? Sustainably is the is the question. What we find is that we've really got to make a, a deep dive into the source of the measurement, i.e., actually at the temperature, flow, valves, uh, heat exchangers, etc feed that information back uh, generally to the cloud for some analytics and applications to be uh, driven, which then allow operators in the future in real time to be able to drive the efficiencies. Uh, so for example, building loading can have an effect if you have an empty office against a full office. The amount of heat that you would require is obviously different, uh, also depending internal external temperatures, for example. Uh, managing all of these extra factors which actually affect the manipulated and control variables has a direct effect. So that requires 
a manifold increase in connectivity. That connectivity is driving what we call the attack surface. So what we often see today is in uh, RFPs or RFQs is a requirement for this connectivity to happen. So we often see questions like the plant can be operated remotely with site-wide web access, uh, for example. That's instantly giving us a potential threat. The BMS, the building management system, shall operate over the client's IT network. Uh, a best practice would often indicate that IT and operational technology OT networks should be segregated. However, in buildings, it's quite often the fact that we have to work within a, a coexistence. This has to be handled very carefully. So not just from a cybersecurity perspective, quite often operationally, this can be uh, a challenge. So for example, in a bank in the, in the UK just two years ago, uh, they had a real fire alarm. And because the network hadn't been appropriately sized, uh, when the alarm flood happened, it caused the IT network to performance to degrade, and it caused a blue screen situation for the fire and, uh, and emergency services. So they actually had to evacuate the building without a full indication of where the source of the uh, fire was, and it was a real fire. So networks in general have to be carefully considered, not only for throughput, but also for the risks associated with IT domains and OT domains being in coexistence. So once again, that's a challenge. And then the final thing is about web browser shall access, shall be totally robust and remove all possibility of remote uh, access to the system would be completely eliminated. Uh, first of all, that's not possible. Uh, so just simply to state that cybersecurity is all about risk, risk management and risk mitigation. Uh, so this is an important point. What does that mean? So we can never eliminate this risk down to zero. So this statement is, uh, is erroneous. And so we have to tread carefully. So a key thing to take away from today's talk is that cybersecurity is all about risk management and risk mitigation and how we can minimize that to what we call a, a tolerable risk. And ultimately that comes back to being a business risk. So cybersecurity, what is it? Quite often it's defined as a collection of people, processes, technology, and stops there. That's all true. Uh, people are often the, the weakest link. Uh, processes are put in place generally to uh, manage the people activity or what we call human factors. Those processes are sustained by technology and the innovation that we see on a, a daily basis almost in the industry today. What's really important is about the preparedness, the, the deep thinking that has to go hand in hand and actually in advance of the people process technology piece. So fully understand your business, what your business risks are, what your tolerable risk is, and potentially where your threats are who the hostile actors are and understanding them so you can put the appropriate levels of defence in place. Now, these are all then work in harmony to ensure that we sustain the user. Uh, the building, for example, the organisation as a, as, a, as a business, the assets that are under their care. Uh, so this could be uh, an HVAC, a VMS system, uh, uh, for example, access control, the cyber environment, i.e. the network and all of the associated components, and quite often the wider public. Uh, so you know, for some industries, uh, if things go really bad within the OT environment, this could cause a disruption to the day-to-day -day life of uh, a small, medium or large section of the population. So it spills outside of the normal operational environment, as, as, as we would say. So at Schneider Electric, we believe that Preparedness should be your first point of discovery to identify where you are, where you would like to be, and then you can put in the protection for your people, the processes that are required and the technology to sustain. We would normally think that you can break this down into three key elements. One is this initial assessment uh, that we would take to find out that, that, that ground zero, the actions required to achieve those objectives, and then finally, the management piece that goes into the sustainability of the uh, system at large. 
So why is everyone a target? Uh, today, in today's environment, criminal organizations are making more from ransomware and bitcoins associated with the ransomware than they are from narcotics. It is now a, a full-time business for many criminal organizations. And many criminal organizations work on the behest of uh, or as a proxy for government agencies. Uh, they can work fast, they often have access to the latest technologies, and they can give uh, a zero attribution to the potential hostile actor who is actually paying the fees. So everyone is really uh, at risk uh, from attack today, simply because of the monetary value associated with the ransom attack. And quite often what we've seen in the last 18 months or so is that the the ransom has been very well sculpted and defined by the target. So essentially, if you're targeted, you will be compromised and there is no cavalry coming to your support. So what do you do? So what we've seen in the, in the past 18 months or so in the UK sector has been uh, a mass target on education. Uh, Schneider Electric have been, been involved in the remediation of a number of uh, educational establishments where we've seen the replacement of the uh, BMS systems uh, because they, they were essentially uh, trashed. Uh, we've also seen the effects in transportation uh, in general, uh, where once again Schneider Electric have been involved in the remediation. And even to the point at uh, CPG or uh, a commercial organisation where we were actually in a meeting uh, with the uh, cybersecurity officer uh, when the cybersecurity officer was intending to exfiltrate information from that uh, commercial organization. Obviously, they could not be in two places at one time. So just to recap, everyone is a target. If you're targeted, you will probably be compromised to a greater or lesser extent. Our job is to minimize that level of compromise. So how do they go about it? Well, there are three key steps uh, from a hostile actor's position. The first key step is to compromise the insider. Now that insider could be someone who works within the organization, and that's you know has in the past typically been through a phishing type attack, or that insider could be through a trusted party, an engineer coming to site with, say, a memory stick, or it could be a third party who has remote access for a managed service uh, activity, for example. Uh, once that insider is compromised, that then is used as the launch pad to compromise the network. And they will use quite often tools that, that are readily available, so they look like normal activity on an IT network or an OT network once that is, is compromised to access the areas of interest. So they will conduct a reconnaissance of the network to identify the assets of most importance uh, to them. Once they've conducted that reconnaissance, and that could be up to two years, uh, and we've seen that, then they compromise the asset and they execute the attack. And the execution of attack is then the request for ransom. Once again, well sculpted, well thought out, uh, well provisioned, and ultimately you will have to go for assistance to get your system back to what we would call business as usual. So when systems are compromised, you will quite often see in the press that we were only down for six hours, say, or one day, and you thought, well, that's not so bad. Uh, for example, the attack in Ukraine was the, the lost power to, I think, 250,000 people just before Christmas, uh, and the outage was out you know, for, for 24 hours, I think 12 hours, which seems manageable. Actually, the backstory to that, and for many of the, uh, the attacks that we have seen, uh, it's not business as usual for another three or four months. So you're thinking of suboptimal performance for an extended period of time. So you really need to think of that. So what's the framework? The framework comes really in, in three key parts. Now, the framework that we would advocate and many in industry advocate is IEC 62443. It's an outcome driven uh, framework. So it's always about improvement and that can be incremental improvement over a period of time, uh, which is a good thing. It's outcome driven so that we are, you know, 
making it more difficult for compromise. And if compromise is made, it makes it the compromise smaller so we can get back to business as usual in as speedy a time as possible. How that is achieved is through three levels. One is the product and the solution provider. It shows Snyder Electric pride ourselves in having a secure design lifecycle associated with 62443. We have to think about the system integrator and how they put the system together. Once again, we would advocate a 62443 uh, process. Schneider Electric is qualified in this process and has certificates to back it up. And then the third point then is about the asset owner and how the assets are maintained over their full asset life cycle. So for our industry, that can often be 15 or 20 years even. So everyone is involved in cybersecurity at every stage. So you really must not wait. And this process really covers from a Schneider perspective, the connected products and the edge control. Uh, once we go up into the apps and analytics, then we think about different forms of frameworks such as the, the uh, 27001. So 62443 is a very good framework. It works very well within the European Union's NIST directive. It's in three points or three phases, the products, the system integration, and then the asset owner. Ultimately, it's the asset owner who owns the risk. So what gives us the authority to talk about it? So for the last few years now at Schneider Electric, we pride ourselves in producing that, driving that sustainability challenge towards uh, 2025. To achieve that, we realized within our manufacturing organization that we had to improve our monitoring and uh, visibility of what was actually happening on the shop floor so that we were shipping product, you know, that was secure. So the number of steps for all manufacturing, we have a baseline level, we then have an intermediate level and an advanced framework depending on the business risk. That's not only the business risk to Schneider Electric, but the knock-on effects to the supply of equipment to our customer base. This covers all 200 plus manufacturing sites. This is a phase program of work, uh, which we're extremely very proud of. One of the key takeaways from this is and one of our lessons was the importance of having uh, a point person allocated on your site to be the cybersecurity point of contact. Uh, so it's almost like your health and safety person, but a cyber person who then takes ownership of all cyber issues and maintains that level of consistency. Then there's the importance of edge protection, i.e. the assets in the field, uh, hardening your network, and then providing OT monitoring to maintain, identify the assets that you have under your care. And if anything nefarious was happening within your network, you can identify it in a timely manner so you can have this continuous threat detection and a timely instant response. So we talk with confidence that we've been doing this for, for a period of time. Uh, we have a great number of years of experience and man hours that we can then bring to our customer base. So what do our customers have to say? Well, really, we talk about demystifying the whole cybersecurity thing, the solution space, and it helps many of our IT and instrument departments to talk a common language. So that allows us to quickly land on a common solution which best sits your business. So just a quick then wrap up of our story. As I said, we started uh, globally within Schneider in 2005, originally a part of a global plant pulse consultancy practice. Where we've moved the consultancy on is we, we don't just talk about consultancy and hand the solution over to the customer base. We can actually go through the design and the definition of what good looks like. We can then assist through the system integration of deploying the solution. We then take that on as a monitoring activity, and we've now moved on to maintenance of the solution through the system, through its full design life cycle. And then finally, we're moving into online training. So we can provide a fully granular support, build, maintain through the full asset life cycle. And we have clients across the board covering all businesses and organizations. And one of the things that glues this together and our commitment was we were the world's first ISA secure product. 
uh, launched on the market and we're a founding member of the ISA Global Cybersecurity Alliance. So our mission to make this happen is that many of our sites are not, you know, 100% site uh, Schneider Electric. So we provide an agnostic service. We like to think that we would start with an assessment. Uh, we provide our cybersecurity across all landscapes from small to large so that we can ensure this uh, consistency of execution. Uh, for our clients, we work very much with customized controls based very much on the customer's requirements. And you know, very much we come from a deep understanding of the OT priorities and concerns. That's the operational technology priorities and concerns, which very well may differ from uh, IT. So we're really about functional integrity so that we can protect the asset through its full asset life cycle from end to end with innovation at every level. So then to wrap up, security is really a benefit, not a burden. It is a team effort. Security really is your differentiator. Your organization will thank you. Your customers will thank you. And security is your sustainability advantage. Thank you very much.